From the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back. My name is Alan Bagg, and we are together here on the Wisdom for Life broadcast, where we take God's Word, dig into it for the wisdom of God, so we can experience all the life that Jesus paid for, life in abundance. This week, we've been having a look at the manifestation of the glory that is in you. You've been created with a potential. You've been created with great glory. You are one of God's crowning glories. And we've learned that. We had a look at it this week and last week. I really want to encourage you. There's so much material that we've covered. I'm not going to go through all of it today. Usually I like to do a little bit of a recap. But there's so much else I want to get to. And so we're going to keep pressing in. So I encourage you, get the CDs of last week and then those from this week as well. So you got the grounds the word of God grounding you in this this concept this knowledge that when we are created we are created in the image of God and God took his own glory and imparted it into Jesus Jesus bore the sins of all of us rose from the dead and received the crown of glory and then gave that glory to us we see that in John chapter 17 have a look at verse for Jesus says, I have glorified you on the earth. I finished the work you gave me to do. Come down to verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, the disciples around him, but also those who will believe in me through their word. That's you. So Jesus is praying a prayer here for you. And he says in verse 22, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one, just as we are one. So the word tells us that the glory that Jesus had while he was on this earth, through his death, burial, and resurrection, he passed that glory on to us so that we could do the same things he did and greater, he says. And that glory is what I want to see manifesting in your life. Now when we talk about glory, we're talking about manifested potential. We know that the glory of a bird is to fly and the glory of a fish is to swim. And the glory of man, according to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, is that we were created to be just like God, in His image, with dominion over His creation. Now, of course, God is sovereign. He is the creator of all things, and we are the created. He is the ruler of all, and we are in dominion. We are in subjection to His dominion. Now, that's the only place that God is different. He, he is God Almighty and He always will be. We will never take that place. But other than that, God has created you in His image. He created you as a son. And as a son, He desired for you to rule and reign on this earth. That you'll see in Psalm chapter 8. You see it in Romans chapter 5 verse 17 that those who are in Christ Jesus will reign in Him. Amen. So that is available to you. It's available to us, and so we want to see us walk in it. Now, let's, let's dig a little bit deeper in that. Now that you know that you have the glory of God in you, come and have a look over here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. This is a scripture we referred to quite often last year, but I really believe we need to keep pressing into it because these things are still taking place in us all the time. Verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now you born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you, and wherever He is, there is liberty. That means in your life right now, you are in total freedom. Now that is an amazing thing to think about, particularly if I'm struggling with something. I mean, I've in my life had the enemy attack me. Things have felt like I was in total bondage, and I was struggling and battling. And in times you sometimes cried, God, where are you? And then one day God showed me the scriptures where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I looked at that and I said, well, praise God. That's the truth. And God said, read it again. So I went back and I read it. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And he said to me, do you believe that scripture? I said, yes, Lord, I believe that. He says, then never again will you say, where, are I? where am I? 
Because he said he will never leave you nor forsake you. And if God's word is true, I may not feel him right now. I may not see him anywhere. I may not be experiencing him. I may think I'm the only person on this planet alone. And then I must remember the scripture. Recall it. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You need to do that right now. Just lift your hand and say, God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now say this, God has promised me he'll never leave me. That's right, my friend. He's right there with you now. And where he is, there is liberty. Now I may not feel it at the moment, but I'm going to confess this word that where the spirit is, there is liberty. I am free, free, free. Now look at the next verse, verse 18. But we all, that's you included, we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror. Now let me ask you, when you look in a mirror, what do you see? Well, if I'm looking in a, if my hand, yeah, if I had a mirror on it and I was looking into it, what am I going to see? I see myself. Well, the word of God tells us in James that the word of God is a mirror. That when you look into it, you behold the manner of man that you are. And he said, now if you go away and you forget it, then of course you forget what manner of man you are. You go back to the old sinful carnal nature. But when you look in the word of God, you looking at who you are. Now let me ask you, the word of God, what does that reflect? Well, it reflects God himself. This is a, this is a recording of who God is. This is the word of God in written format. This is God. And so when we look at it, every time we see who God is, you can say, that's me. Whenever you see who Jesus is, that's me. You created in his image. And so you're looking in a mirror. Now listen to what it says. Beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So when you see the glory of the Lord, you are looking at your potential. Oh, hallelujah. Next time you look in a physical mirror, when you see yourself in that mirror, look at it and say, I am looking at the glory of the Lord. That's not arrogance. God created you. You are a manifestation of His glory. You are in fact <laughs> the crowning of His whole creation. Remember He said God created the heavens and the earth. And as He was creating, He created the next thing. He said, it is good. And then He created the next thing. It is good. And then He created and He looked and He said, it is good. Eventually you get down to man and the Bible says He created man. And when He saw it, He said, that is very very good. And that's exactly where he stopped. He's, that was the crowning creation, the crowning glory. And he placed on that man, he blessed him. And he said, now be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it and take dominion. He crowned him with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Now, that's why when you look as in a mirror, when you look in the word of God, you behold the glory of the Lord. Now listen to the next part. We are being transformed into the same image. There it is in the scripture. I tell you, it is written. We are being transformed into the same image. How? From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord who gives you liberty. Now listen to this. Into the same image from glory to glory. So if it's from glory... To glory, that means there's already a glory in you. All right? So that glory is your potential. It's your ability. But it's not yet the full manifestation. But Paul says here that we are being transformed. Now that word transformed is the same word used in Romans chapter 12 verse 2. Where it says that we are transformed by the renewing of the mind. That word transformed is the Greek word metamorphio. It means metamorphosis it's the word that we get our it's a root word to our word metamorphosis when a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and you wait there for a few days and then eventually out comes a butterfly i mean they went in a creepy crawly came out a flying beautiful creature eating you know leaves and dust now drinking the nectar of flowers you see that's that's that absolute transformation you don't recognize the creature from the original creature. And the Bible says that we are being transformed. You may not think that you're anything right now. But you know what? You're created in the image of God. You've been created with His potential. You have His ability in you. You have the mind of Christ. You've got His glory. 
His grace, His wisdom, His anointing, His word, His spirit. <laughs> yeah, are you getting this? It's all inside of you. And so as you start renewing your mind to these things and start to read the word of God and listen to tapes on the subject and just begin to transform, what happens is you transform from that, that, that glory that you have at the moment, but you transform into a higher glory. And then from that glory transformed into a higher glory. And that's going to keep happening until you are the very image of God, the glory of God. And that's God's potential. That, that, that is His destination. That's His destiny for you. And praise God, that work has begun. Remember the word says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Now to Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above what you ask or think, I mean, that's an amazing thing. Think about it. People sometimes say to me, what do you think God is going to be doing in your life? Well, the moment I can think it, I know He's going to be doing more. Because if I think God's going to do that in my life, He says He does exceedingly abundantly above what you ask or think. So whatever I've asked for, whatever I've thought, God's going to be going even beyond that. I mean, that is an amazing thing. Now, how does He do that? According to... To the power that works in us. Now, usually we've stopped at that verse there and said, you see, the power of God in us. What power is that? The next verse, look at verse 21. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all gener generations for how long? Forever and ever. Now, if you've got a good Bible, you'll notice that that word be is in italics. You know why that is? Well, this Bible here that I'm reading, is in, it's written in English. But you know that the original wasn't in English. The original in the Old Testament was in Hebrew. And in the New Testament, it's in Greek. And there's some Aramaic verses as well. But the majority of the New Testament is written in Greek. Now, when that is translated into English, sometimes the translator felt the sentence didn't quite make sense. Based on his tradition and understanding, he thought, no, this doesn't quite make sense. So he would insert words that were not in the original text. And what they did is they left that in italics so that you would know. So any word in italics is written in by the privilege of the translator, not the author. So that word B was not written by Paul. He wrote it this way. Now to our God, who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to Him. The power that works in us to Him, glory in the church. Oh, hallelujah. You got this? The glory of God is in you and me. We are the church. The church is not the building. The church is you and me. You and me, created in the image of God, have the glory of God in us. we crowned with that glory. That glory... When we recognize God as our Lord and as our Savior, as the creator of all things, when I believe that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him, Hebrews 11 verse 6, that is faith that pleases Him. When I do that, I say, God, this is how far I think. This is what I've asked for. But I know that you do exceedingly, abundantly above. When I do that, when I say that, I am releasing to Him this glory. And as I release to Him that glory, that power in me goes into action and it produces this thing exceedingly abundantly above. And God is the one that does it because you've trusted Him and believed Him for it. And what happens, that potential that He's placed in you begins to be revealed and you become what He's called you to be. See, it's so important that we understand the environment. Come with me and have a look at John chapter 15. You see, so often people struggle and battle in life and, 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 they, and, they, and they have a, you know, always trying to strive. And I mean, they go to work. They hate going to work. They hate all day at work. They try to do the best they can. They keep messing up. The boss keeps shouting at them, keeps moaning at them, saying, what's wrong with you? Are you stupid or something? Say, but I'm trying, I'm trying. But it never seems to work. Well, maybe you're, out, you're in the wrong environment. You take a fish and you put it onto the, onto the ground and you say, now walk. That fish is going to, I mean, that fish is going to struggle. Even it, it starts to flop and it's it dying. That fish is dying because it's in the wrong environment. And it'll do its best to try and walk back to the water, but it can't because it wasn't designed to do that. 
You pick that fish up and you drop it in the water. Man, that glory shows up and poof, that fish is gone. You won't find it again. It's out of there. That's exactly the way it is with man. You know, I struggled through life and tried to do things and tried this and tried that and messed up at many of them. But then one day I knew God had called me. And I stood up and I said, Lord, I'm prepared to do what you've called me to do. And so often, I mean, I've, I, I remember one in particular, I'd be visiting somebody and as a pastor, I'd kind of sit in the back row. I'm on holiday. I don't want to be recognized. I just want to be here and serve God on my own. And all of a sudden, the pastor spotted me. He said, Pastor Alan Bag is here with us. Come on up. And so they called me to the front and said, uh, it's so nice for you to be with us here. And I said, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I said, why don't you give the word this morning? I mean, and handed me the mic. Now, most people would have said, oh, oh, oh I'm not ready. You know? I mean, I took that mic and I got up there and I just, I mean, I was, I just went on and preached. Now, someone may say, but I haven't prepared yet. Well, I'd already done the preparation. I spent time in the Word, and I am a fish in water. When it comes to preaching the Word of God, I am a fish in water. That's why I can speak the Word with authority, with understanding. It's got nothing to do with Alan Bagg. I'm not saying this arrogantly. I could never do this on my own. I mean, Alan Bagg, the unsaved Alan, B.C., before Christ. I'd get up at school and have to do these orals, you know, where you have to do speaking in class. And man, I would stand there. And I, would, I, could, I could hardly, I mean, I was sweating. I was so worried about who was watching and who was thinking. I mean, I was a, a lost case. But when I was born again, what happened? Glory moved in. I was a fish back in water. God had created me, put me on this planet for what I'm doing right here. He designed me for this. The problem was I wasn't yet born again. But once I was saved, I was back in the midst of glory. I was like Adam in the Garden of Eden, where before he had sinned. I could stand up and take the th just take any microphone. I could take the floor, take the platform, and I could speak confidently the Word of God. Why? God designed me that way. He put the swim in the fish. He put the fly in the bird. He put the preach in Alan. Now he's put something in you. What is it? He's created you for something. Find out what it is. I don't know how you, you know, you spend time with God and let Him get a hold of it. You know, you spend time with the Holy Spirit interceding, praying, eventually it'll rise up. But you know how I found out in the beginning? I did everything. When I first got saved, if Pastor Theo asked for something, I was there. I mean, I, he said, we need someone here on Saturday to pray. I was there. I was praying. He says, we need to go visit someone on Monday. I was there to go and visit. We need to clean the building on Tuesday. I was there to clean. We need to paint on Wednesday. I was there to paint. I, everything I was just doing, 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 doing. And what happened was, as I got more and more involved, all of a sudden I found my water. I was a fish. I thought, hang on, this is, this is where I'm working. This is where I manifest. This is where the glory starts to show up. And that's when I saw God in action. And praise God, you can do the same thing right now. Begin to get involved. As you partner with this ministry, you are manifesting glory. As you walk in the things of God, you are manifesting glory. As you get involved in your church back home, get involved in the visitation teams, prayer, get involved in the home cells, do come and clean the building, sweep the floor, just do whatever, and you will see the glory will begin to show up. And there's something that you've been created for. Start to write that book. Get down and, and compose that song. Begin to help and reach out. Lay hands on the sick. Speak a word of encouragement into someone's life. Read the word of God out loud to someone. I'm telling you, you will see glory show up. See, Jesus said here in John chapter 15, verse 1, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every, branch that bear, every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Now listen, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears, not, bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. See, that's what happened to me when I was at school. I was without Jesus. I couldn't even do an oral a speech. But praise God, when I got saved, He moved into my life. And as you spend time with Him, 
and abide in his presence, and his presence abides in you. You can do all things. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, is cast out as a branches and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Now listen, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so you'll be my disciples. How is the Father glorified? When you spend time with Jesus, Jesus in you, you in Him, and allow His anointing, His grace, His glory to rise up, and whatever you do, you do it in the name of Jesus. When that happens, God's glory will show up in your life and start to move in you and through you into the lives of other people. And you too will see people changed and delivered by the glory of God that you are carrying in you, that you are manifesting in the name of Jesus. It is His glory and it's manifesting in you today through you into this earth. Praise God. I believe you got a hold of it. Now, there's some other things that I still want to share with you, and so I'll see you right after. Man, created a little lower than God, and crowned with glory and honor. What is the crown of glory, and how can we receive our crown of glory? These are just some of the questions answered in this powerful six-part series. In this series, Pastor Alan Beck spends close to six hours uncovering what the crown of glory is. He helps reveal what the crown of glory means to us as believers, as well as practical principles that you need in order to activate the crown of glory in your life. This series is an in-depth study, revealing the immense power and authority God has given us as believers. This series will renew your mind and will build your faith so you too can walk confidently in the power and authority Jesus died to give us. Get hold of your series on DVD or CD. Walk in the dominion and authority God has given you. Contact us by calling our number or writing to us here at Allen Back Ministries. A lot of people are brought up and kind of taught to just take their place in life and, you know, don't be too arrogant or over the top and, you know, I'm just an old worm and just an old sinner saved by grace. No, you were a sinner. But you've been saved by grace. And today you're a son, a child, a daughter of God. And if you are a son, then you are an heir. An heir of God, a co-heir with Christ. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He got the crown of glory back for you. And once again, it's yours. Now, of course, we don't walk in arrogance. We not, that's got nothing to do with us. It's all Him. He did it. He paid the price. He gave it. It's a gift. But you know what? The fact that He gave it, I'm not going to slink underneath it. I'm going to stand up confidently saying, I know what my God has done, and I'm walking with that crown. So make sure you get this. It's going to transform your life. It's going to change you, and you're going to enjoy it. Get it today. Friend, of course, to receive that crown, you need to be born again, a child of God. Now, maybe you're watching this program, but you've never yet called Jesus your Lord and your Savior. You see, going to church doesn't make a person a Christian any more than going to a hospital makes you a doctor. So you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that He is raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that He is Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's do that together now. Let's pray that prayer right now while you're watching. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, out loud say, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, I know you died for me. You paid the price for my son. And today you are alive. You were raised from the dead. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. And today I receive you as my Lord. You are my Savior. Once again, I am crowned with glory and honor. Your glory, Father, in me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. I have a gift for you now. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, I want to give the CD to you. It's free of charge. I want to sow it into your life with some material for you to read. 
please just call me on that phone number or write to us at that address. As soon as we got your details, I'm going to send that to you and you'll have it within a few days. I'll pay the postage as well. And you can enjoy it and walk in the fullness of what God has given you. All our partners out there, I really want to thank you so much for your faithfulness. It's because of your commitment to this word that we are able to continue broadcasting these programs and reach so many lives. You are making a difference and I appreciate it. Thank you and God bless you. Until tomorrow, this is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can. 